Hello Geographers, this is a Geography Talk 3 and today we're going to look at a 20 mark evaluate question from the Water and Carbon section of the AQA AS paper in 2017. So the question we're going to look at is this one and the aims today to consider the technique required to answer a 20 marker and to look at an example answer. So just to remind you, um, you should have already looked through the exam structure video uh, this question is a 20 mark evaluate question so 10 marks for AO1, 10 marks for AO2 so AO1 being your knowledge and understanding of place, concepts, processes understanding change, AO2 being able to apply your knowledge and being able to analyse and conclude and to evaluate the points you're making so if you've already seen one of these 20 mark evaluate questions you'll have come across the PICKLE acronym it's not perfect uh, this stands for P uh, P for place P for process C for change C for conclusion L for links and E for evaluation so those first three letters come from AO1 knowledge and the final three from AO2 the ability to um, assess and apply knowledge. It's not perfect, um, it's not a perfect way to go about just structuring your answer. I wouldn't recommend a paragraph on place, a paragraph on process, but these are the six elements you need to include in a 20 mark answer as this grid over here is what your examiners will be using to give you a mark out of 20 on those three 20 markers you'll get on each paper. So let's break down the question. This question, with reference to a river catchment that you've studied, assess the potential impact of human activity upon the drainage basin. So this question comes from water and carbon, but specifically on the water section of that unit. And it's all about one of the final parts you probably did within your learning, where you applied your understanding of the water cycle and partly the carbon cycle to a local scale drainage basin. So this question is only concerning the water element of it. So straight away, uh, this part here, impact of human activity upon the drainage basin. So looking at how we as humans might impact, how we might change the processes that occur. So that could be processes relating to stores, to flows, potentially to inputs and outputs. So straight away, AO1 process, I want to be using some of those key terms within my answer. In terms of place, well, for me, it's the River Brock in Lancashire, which is one of the textbook examples. Um, but it's going to be really important, especially for this question, to show that I truly understand the location and I don't just remember a few odd names of towns and uh, the wider area. I need to make it really clear that I understand place. And that covers these two parts of AO1. In terms of change in this question, because it's potential, I might be looking at how things might change in the future in terms of land use, um, how larger scale issues such as global warming could create change to these processes in the future, how human activity might be different um, as we go through time. So that gives me this element of temporal change that covers AO1. In terms of AO2, uh, ability to analyse and assess, well the command word is to assess the potential. So how much so is human activity now and in the future going to affect the drainage basin? Uh, I think it'd be quite easy to consider positive and negative effects on the drainage basin. I would try and avoid this. It's hard to define what a positive and negative effect is but simply talking about if it would increase a store or decrease flows within a river channel I think that'd be a much more effective answer. So some of the things that jump out to me um, I might be thinking about like land use change such as farming and how that might affect the flow of water into a river and ultimately the discharge within that river. I might be thinking about restoration projects such as afforestation or in this case um, restoration of peat bogs how that might affect stores within aquifers and um, within the upland areas themselves I might look at how human management of the river system to prevent flooding 
might impact and change some of those key processes within the hydrological cycle. Um, I certainly want to be looking at which human activities seem to have the most significant impact. I'll probably get to the conclusion that lots of human activity now within the drainage basin is quite small scale, therefore having limited impact, and hopefully moving somewhere um, towards the end within my conclusion of making the point that some of these larger issues such as global warming might have a much larger impact into the future and has potential to really change some of the processes within this drainage basin due to a, a major change in input. So these are some of my initial ideas and I'm sure you've got you've got many too and this um, is a quite detailed plan um, I've decided to split my paragraphs up into how human I humans impact flows and how humans impact stores. You'll see this doesn't work perfectly, but it gives some structure to my answer. I'm going to, within the first section, talk about farming and land use change as it's quite useful for the River Brock. Um, you can see there's a little bit of evaluation in here. So I'm initially going to talk about things like farming linking to deforestation how that might affect lag time and through flow. Um, I could evaluate this by saying this has already happened and largely land use changes won't change too much into the future. Uh, but I could also go on and talk about change in farming practices. So I'm trying to really create a strong discussion within my answer here, trying to give an example of how it might change in one way. Um, however, some people could believe it could change in another way. Um, equally, I'm going to move on and talk about afforestation, uh, protection of woodland areas and how that might affect processes and for me talking about the example of Beacon Fell. Um, again, evaluation in talking about the idea that this is a very much a small proportion of the drainage basin, and therefore having a minor impact on some of those processes as a, as a part of evaluation. Then it, within this paragraph on flows, I want to talk about management of discharge within the river, so to try and regulate flow to reduce the risk of flooding. Again, potential into the future, well, maybe we'll need to manage the river brock more as global warming will make discharge um, a lot more difficult to predict and possibly more flashy into the future, so extreme high peak discharges. And that will um, conclude all of my information on flows. Then in order to talk about how humans impact stores, um, I want to talk about the process of abstraction and how that might deplete aquifers. So I've got my example of Myers Cough College uh, and how much water they abstract and thinking about how that might change into the future. And then my final point uh, within stores looking at peat bog restoration in the upper course of the river and how might how this might hold water back as overland stores and stores within peat bogs which would ultimately reduce the flashiness of the river and r reduce the extreme high uh, discharges that might occur further downstream. Again evaluation that this is small scale community action in this location and therefore not a large a large impact in the future. Uh, my conclusion um, something along those lines humans do have an impact both in increasing some of these processes and decreasing them and trying to avoid this idea of positive and negative and I want to at some point with my conclusion talk about the importance of global warming into the future as I think this is really important um, in terms of understanding time and also understanding one of the major geographical issues that might affect drainage basin processes. So in terms of an answer, my, my answer looks like this. Uh, feel free to pause it and have a proper read through and on the next slide I'll talk through some of the areas that I think are quite strong. So uh, I'm not for a second saying this is a perfect answer. It's it's pretty good. Um, I've tried to do it in the time conditions as always. Uh, so there will be some typos, there will be some minor errors, uh, but hopefully it ticks enough of those pickle boxes in order to get a grade within the level four category, which is what I'm aiming for. So I'm not going to read it out, I'm going to point out a few areas though. Uh, brief introduction, um, split up, flows, stores, conclusion. And I think I'd be tempted to do that in an exam to show my structuring of an answer to make it easier to mark. So the first section, uh, talking about land use, um, I've tried to 
a, a clear example, specific example to show my understanding of place. So talking about how Manor House Farm, um, due through a, a recent survey from the Catchment Sensitive Farming Report, talked about um, soil compaction due to cattle farming and how this would increase surface water. So this is, a, I think, a really good point to show how humans are impacting one of the processes. Um, I then go on to evaluate it. So this green section here is my evaluation. So this is one point, and then look, however, overall it could be argued that the process of ploughing fields would break up the boulder clays. So I'm saying here we could increase surface flow and surface water. However, there is an alternative argument to this. There are other factors in play, and the breakup of the boulder clays, which is specific to this area, um, would actually allow greater rates of infiltration. Therefore, it certainly is a, a more complex topic than it might seem at first. Into my second point about afforestation, talking about Beacon Fell, a specific area in the River Brox catchment, talking about the relationship between woodland areas and infiltration and stem flow as key AO1 processes. Um, and the green section, again, this is my evaluation. It could also be argued that although a greater degree of environmentalism in the future, might potentially increase the cover coverage uh, and impact, it is unlikely that afforestation would occur on a large scale. So in this I'm trying to make the point that although afforestation can have an impact in the Brox Basin, in terms of proportional area at the moment it's very small and I don't see that changing largely in the future as uh, the land is largely used for farming and is unlikely to be turned over to just large woodland and forested areas. Uh, moving on, talking about specific flood, um, and again here, trying to evaluate, trying to add the idea of change into the future, um, linking into the question, so this has high potential, uh, and then talking about global warming into the future. So within this first paragraph, I think I've got enough AO1 in terms of process. I think I'm doing my very best to show an understanding of place. Um, I'm doing my best to conclude um, in various points and certainly to evaluate and assess, so to say this is one argument and this is what's happening, however you could look at it from this point of view. Uh, the same continues into abstraction of water, talking about the aquifer, this Sherwood sandstone, uh, talking about a specific location and how much water they're able to abstract and what the impact of that's going to be. Uh, the idea of this is currently sustainable and it's been judged to be sustainable but will it be sustainable into the future? And then my final point on peat bog restoration, uh, looking at the Forest of Boland peat priority 2013 report, looking at the idea of um, these peat bogs are being restored in the upper course, for example, Hazelhurst Fell, um, and how this would hold back water um, from the rivulets, holding back some of the flow of water, therefore regulating the discharge of the river brock further downstream. So again, a bit of evaluation talking about this in terms of scale uh, into the future. And then an overall conclusion. So as always, I'm not saying it's perfect. Um, when looking at the mark scheme, um, you'll see it covers quite a few points within the mark scheme. It certainly generates a discussion and a an argument. Um, it possibly could do with a little bit more conclusions or, or more conclusions as it goes but I do believe it's ticking lots of those boxes along the way. So I hope that's helped uh, a little bit. If you've got any questions, please ask. Thank you very much.